Welcome back to the final chapter of this course. We pretty much finished programming the mechanics of our setup. Now we just have a couple of things to apply the finishing touches. The first is going to be in volumes and scroll down to get post process volume. Drag this in. We're going to zero everything out here. And we're going to do 5000 in the Z to get it out of the view of the camera. Now, in a bigger scene, you would want to manually scale and place the volume. But for a smaller and less complex scene, all we need to do is to type in infinite extent and enable this. Essentially, what this means is that our post-process settings will be applied to the entire scene. And now we're going to search for ray, for ray tracing settings, because those are the settings that we only need to focus on. The first is going to be ray tracing ambient occlusion, which is one of the areas that produce a lot of noise. So let's crank this to four samples per pixel, and I'm going to adjust the radius to 100. The next one is going to be ray tracing reflections, another area that produces noise. Let's do two. And that's it for settings. Let's clear this out. And actually, we're going to play, but on a full screen. So do new editor window and full screen it. Click one of the cubes and you can see that the rendering is very clean and we can't really see any noise. So, okay, let's close this out and let's work on the next step. As you may have seen, I have a custom cursor that also animates on the left click. We're going to make that now. So go to content. We're going to make a new folder called underscore UI and in the folder drag in the TX circle PNG file that is included in the course files. Double click this and we're going to change the compression settings to user interface 2D. Click save. Let's close this out and we need to create a UI material. So right click, click material. We're going to name it Matt cursor. Let's double click to open. Let's bring this over here. And in the material domain, we need to choose user interface and blend mode should be transparent or translucent. And the first thing we're going to do is to hold the three key click to make a color, connect this to the final color, and let's give it a 50% gray. The next thing is going to be a texture sample sample 2D and just name it mask here. And in here, we're going to apply the TX circle and we're going to actually also hold one click and set this to 0 0.5. And we're going to multiply this. Connect this up and we're going to connect this into opacity. So what we have now is a 50% opacity using this mask and 50% gray in the color. Let's just save, close this out, go back to the main level. And now we need to create a widget blueprint, which is going to be in the user interface widget blueprint. Let's just call it WD cursor. Double click. Let's move this here. And the first thing we need is an image in the palette here. Drag this in. We're going to zero the position X and Y and giving it a size of 64 by 64. And in the brush, what we do is open this and select matte cursor and compile. The next thing to do is to create the animation. So click the image zero here and we're going to create an animation. Let's call it click anim and click that. And we're going to add a track for image zero and we're going to add a opacity track. So render opacity and we're also going to add a transform track. The first keyframe is going to be the opacity. I'm going to start it at 0.3 and add the keyframe and let's move it to 0.2 seconds in here and add a keyframe and this is going to be one and open the transform we're going to affect the scale the first keyframe is going to be 0 0.75 for x and y 
and at 0 0.2 seconds, we're going to scale it up back to 1. And that's it for the animation. Now go to the graph, the event graph. We don't need these, but we're going to need a tick. And drag in the click anim. Get click anim and drag out of here and do play animation forward. We're going to restore state to true. And to do this, what we need to do is to check whether we're clicking the left mouse. To do that, we need to get player controller. And we can do is key, is input key down. And we're going to choose left, left mouse button. And this is expecting a Boolean. So we're going to use a branch, connect this up, connect here. And if it's true, we're going to play the animation forward. Now experienced Unreal Engine devs will know that this is a terribly inefficient way to implement something like this. But since we want to keep things simple and we have a small scene, we can run it like this without taking a hit on performance. So let's compile save. And to apply this widget, we're going to go to settings and down to user interface and software cursors going to add an element and we're going to do default here and here we're going to apply the WD cursor. Okay, go to main level, let's play. And as you can see, now we have the custom cursor where we click left, it plays the animation and it should also work for the cubes. If you made it this far into the course, well, congratulations. I hope it gave you some inspiration and motivation to continue learning on your engine and to stay up to date with my future courses and tutorials, please subscribe. And also don't forget to share this with anyone who you think might be interested. Now this is the end of the course, thank you very much and see you in the next video.